I've got another uh, Atlas locomotive here that I'm going to install a Lope Sound decoder that's um, for Arcado and um, <clears throat> take the shell off here. This one has the stock um, board in it. No DCC or anything. I have three others here of the same one. These are the uh, GE C40 8s and uh, I've had these for a few years here. Like I said, they've got decoders in them already. At least three of them do. With the exception of the one here that's got the stock DC decoder board in it. So the next plan is to pull that off, uh, disassemble the chassis here, the frame, pull the uh, motor out the trucks, <clears throat> do a little machine work here and uh, so that we can set that decoder on top. And then I might have to machine a little bit more here on the back here to fit the speaker. Here's the speaker here uh, that I'm going to use. And the frame's got a little raised section over here too. So my plan is, is to break out the Dremel tool again and shave a little bit off so that that fits. And then we will wire that pretty much like I did with my uh, SD60 video. Um, and that should, um, that should work. So let's get to uh, disassembling this locomotive here. All right, frame's been disassembled. Got the motor out. Uh, the copper leads, which I might want to point out, are real tricky to pull out. They're really kind of wedged in there. I had to use a pair of needle nose pliers to pull them out. So be careful with that. <clears throat> it's kind of interesting how <clears throat> from the factory this is painted black. Three quarters of it. And then you've got the uh, upper quarter here that's uh, bare metal. So... I have no idea why. So our next step is to shave off just a little bit up on the top here so that the decoder can sit somewhat flush. And then I will look at putting the speaker about right there. And we'll solder things up. The LEDs, solder leads to the motor. and. I have some really, really small, thin uh, wire, leftover wire from some um, micro LEDs that I will solder to the copper leads here for the pickups. So next step is to head to the machine shop with the Dremel tool and we'll shave off the top a little bit here. So very much like when I set up the uh, SD60 frame, my I'm using this little mini level here because yeah, my table's not quite level, so I'm basically matching the level with the frame here. I'm gonna get this where I need it. That's my cat meowing. Oops.
there we have it. Shaved off a little bit there. I will take the file down and file down the rough edges here and wash it off with some soap and water and uh, start reassembling this. I have this nice uh, set of uh, miniature files, different shapes, and uh, I think I got them uh, out of Micromark. So I'll just take a uh, flat file here, just kind of round off sharp edges here. Get all the burrs off. Make sure everything's nice and smooth. Like so, as you can see, maybe <clears throat> I shine the light on there. A lot of metal shavings in there. There was uh, quite a bit of grease from the factory on the chassis here where the gears are that I wiped off just to keep from uh, collecting more and more metal shavings here. So we'll give it a good bath. I'll tear it apart here, these two halves here, and with some soap and water, get all the uh, metal shavings off and then start putting it back together. There we go. On these Atlas locomotives, when you tear them apart, be sure you don't lose the uh, plastic nuts and little spacers here and screws. Also, in the middle here, there's a couple other little spacers there to keep the um, two halves from shorting out. Those, uh, those are very small and hard to find, so Pull these off with some tweezers here so you can see how big they are. Little tiny things there, so watch out. You don't want to lose your parts there. Put them in a little tray or bin or something like that while you're working on this so you don't uh, misplace them. Okay, I got two halves here. We're going to put some warm water on them. I got an old toothbrush here that I'm going to use to kind of clean them up. Put a little soap. Those metal shavings out of there. There we go, all nice and clean. I'll dry them off on a paper towel and let them sit for a little while so they dry out. I had the frame um, reassembled, just put the two halves together, and then um, just to check the clearance with the speaker, I have taped it approximately where I'm going to mount it. I just want to make sure that it's going to fit when I put everything together here nice and flush to where I don't have to do any more machining, and it looks like we're, we're good there. I want to point out with these Atlas uh, uh, dash eights um, have pretty good detail here with the hoses, the MU hose uh, and the, the cut levers. Um, I like that uh, with these locomotives here. I also took a sharpie with the old light board and marked on the frame where approximately the LEDs are so that I shorten them up to the right uh, length there so they're not too long. So I've got my mark there, Sharpie, and then uh, back over here too. So when I size up the board before I solder, it's gonna be something like this right here. And then I'll cut and solder the LEDs to length there. And then I'm planning to tape the board down with some Captain tape and then we'll solder some wires for the uh, motor leads and then the uh, track voltage leads we'll solder some wires up to the decoder here okay board is taped down LEDs are soldered you can see my wires coming off the motor that I've soldered I will solder those up to the, the motor tabs here 
and then I need to reinstall the copper pickups and then solder wire from there up to uh, the board pickups here on the left, these little tabs right here. And then put the trucks on and then uh, program it, see if we get uh, some sound and some movement. Everything's all soldered up here. Um, I will admit I got a little sloppy with my soldering and had an issue with the rear headlight. For some reason it was... Oh, come on, out of focus here. Um, for some reason, when I was in reverse mode, uh, the light was constantly on and would cancel the sound of the motor. So there was a short or something somewhere. Fortunately, nothing catastrophic. So I ended up, uh, I got a micro LED here that's just kind of, kind of free standing there. I will kind of gently aim that towards the rear of the shell when I get the thing, the, the shell back on. But it is uh, soldered to the auxiliary three setting for the rear headlight. So let's go ahead and give it a, a whirl here. I have it programmed on using the, let's see here, it is the, this is on the ESE website here. It's the GE 16-7 FDL 16.J6 late exhaust. Basically the sound file for an old Dash 8 is the one I have loaded on here. So let's give it a little listen here, see what it sounds like. All right, sounds pretty good. I'm gonna slap the shell on here. Hopefully everything goes in nice and uh, snug and uh, we'll give it another whirl with the shell on. See, we get it to move too. All right, shell is on, let's give it a whirl here. Turn on our headlight. Check on our rear headlight here. Nice and bright. We got it set up on the dimmer setting, F12. Okay. Okay, another Atlas locomotive in the uh, in the fleet converted and done fairly uh, easily with a little bit of machining. Uh, other than that, uh, good to go. Put her on the layout with the uh, sister locomotives, and uh, we'll start pulling a train. All right, so this is actually. Uh, a few weeks later, um, wanted to get some footage of it on my cheesy layout here, but um, anyway, we've got it hooked up to a couple of Kato 
SC40-2 is my middle unit here is actually a dummy unit no um, motor in it but I did put a uh, single function decoder with a little flashing uh, beacon up there and then the uh, second unit is powered I did have to do some adjustments it's got a Digitrax decoder in it so that it would um, wouldn't run uh, so fast because the um, Atlas one here even with the <coughs> excuse me ESU decoder still run a little slow but a lot better than with a Digitrax decoder so let's fire it up and we'll uh, we're gonna pull a little short uh, hopper train here on the layout let's start her up So there you have it. That was the uh, Atlas engine with a uh, Woke Sound decoder for Kato. And I've had a couple people ask me why I didn't put the um, ESU um, version for Atlas and Intermountain. I have done that. Uh, I did that on a uh, SD60 uh, BN unit. And to be honest, uh, when it comes to the auxiliary stuff, on the, the, the Alice version one, they don't, the terminals are really hard to get to. They've already got LEDs soldered to the board. It's actually, those are boards, I think they're actually for a factory equipped Atlas model. Um, and it was a little more difficult putting that in. Didn't really require machining uh, like I did on this one here, but I just like the Kato boards. They're a lot more si simpler. I think the part number is a 53741. That's the, the one for the Kato uh, chassis. So, I don't know. I'm going to probably, if I keep doing more Atlas uh, locomotives, I'm just going to do it with the Kato. I don't mind doing the machining either. It uh, actually adds a little more work, which makes it a little more fun. So, anyway, hopefully, you enjoyed this tutorial here and uh, I'll give you some ideas here. And uh, appreciate y'all checking it out. Have a good one.